spike at the top edge, massive before the sweep took place. There's the sweep there. There's the Voltix. We bought the bottom edge, capped it out, bought the bottom edge again on the retest, and managed to swing that oil price beautifully away up to 6,900. Great trade, right? Great trade. Made fortunes on that little bit of business there. It was that good. Made a fortune on it. Little programs like that, guys. Little buy and sell programs. You can't whack it. You can't whack it. So, um, what were the numbers today, guys? There was a couple of big numbers yesterday, by the way. There was also the big CPI numbers. I talked about that for the bonds this morning, and uh, it was just embarrassing how easy it was last night to make two thousand dollars a contract on oil uh, on bonds. Um, the way that the uh, the way that the price was below the CPI number coming into an auction. Yeah, there's going to be there's going to be massive demand for that, and uh, sure enough, all you have to do is make sure you're in it before the demand shows up. Before the demand shows up, and um, Sam, it's below the CPI number. That's what I was saying, right? It was below the CPI number. You couldn't actually believe it. I mean, it's ridiculous. I drew a little diagram for everybody this morning about this idea here. We'll go back over this briefly in classroom so that everybody understands what this diagram represents. But this is the opportunity that I was seeing. This was the opportunity, the price and the 10-year auction. And there's absolutely no question in my mind that this was going to be an extreme auction. It had to be an extreme auction. So all you had to do was buy as much bonds before the auction as possible. And you knew you were on a ride to, uh, to uh, potentially what I thought was going to be $1,000 turned out to be $2,000 a contract on size. Nuts, absolutely nuts. Probably the easiest bond trade this year because it was already preset in stone that you're going to make your monies. Preset in stone because of the CPI numbers, guys. Unbelievable. But we'll touch on that because it's such an important point. Because um, I don't know how many people, I don't know how many people made the connection, and I don't understand that there's a lot of bond traders in here. A lot of bond traders in here that have to have surely made the connection between CPI numbers and the bond auction. It's, we tweeted it several times in the past. In the, in the past week, the big day is going to be the CPI numbers followed by the bond auction. So it should have had everybody on board. Everybody on board. Um, we talked about the, the uh, knobs, uh, knob spread steepener a short while ago, the potential for that, and, and this is a 15-minute chart. We talked about this, this knob spread steepener, which was the blue line here. You can see what's happened since we chatted about it, guys. We were talking about going long the knob spread here. It has risen. There's plenty of upside on that trade, and it's made a fair amount of money. It's not, uh, it's not finished yet. You can see the knob spread is still running behind the fives twos, suggesting that the, the three by ones still has further to go to the upside. So that opportunity is still in play on the, at the moment for the knob spread to uh, to continue to, uh, to to steepen at the present moment. So that's a good looking trade, by the way, guys. That is a very good looking trade. Uh, in terms of numbers uh, last night coming into today, uh, we've 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 had a few. Uh, they're not the most uh, they're not a, the most impressive bag of uh, numbers that we've ever seen, have they? So let's just uh, rattle through. Let's just rattle through the numbers that we have seen, guys. Um, Predominantly out the UK, we've had GDP numbers in line, construction output numbers missed, GDP month on month beat expectations, good trades balance number missed, the index of services beat expectations, industrial production, manufacturing production, and business investments all missed expectations. Eurozone industrial production was uh, down at minus 0.3%, but that was in line with expectations, and it was slightly better than the prior of minus 1.1%. Quite important numbers again this afternoon. We've got PPI numbers, core PPI numbers forecast a little bit softer again, guys. A little bit softer. And, um, you know, that's something again that we can look at. That's coming out at um, half past in just 20 minutes' time. PPI numbers in 20 minutes' time, guys. And then we finish off today's uh, markets with the 30 year bond auction at uh, six o'clock and obviously you just draw your at six o'clock you draw your lines against last uh, last night's bond auction to see the see whether there's going to be a priced in demand or whether the demand has now been satisfied 
Um, so something for you to do tonight, but you've missed a big opportunity if you never traded last night's opportunity. That said, it's gone for another month at least. And uh, that was sensational last night, absolutely sensational. Um, we gave a brilliant little call for anybody that fancied uh, trying a bit of spread trading. You might be saying, what was that then? Well, it was called a crack spread short. We told you to t sell the 26, uh, the 2760s. And uh, when we started to come into the volumes this morning, it was trading at 2760s. And what's happened to that crack spread short? It's dropped down to 2690s. 700. $700 a contract, Sam. $700 a contract on that spread. That's pretty good, isn't it? When you think about it, that's a pretty good little trade there. And all you had to do was recognize that the $27.60 was a was a selling level for was a selling level for uh, the crack spread. Now, obviously, it's about trying to get volume on your R-Bob. It's not about getting volume on your oil. It's about getting volume on R-Bob because that's where the difficulty lies. That's why you've got to wait for the London market to start moving into the volumes before you can do any business on this. So what a great, uh, what a great trade, guys. What a great spread trade. Anyhow, 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 I hope you're all good today, guys. I hope you're all good today. We've got a big wide of money, probably our biggest bet of the uh, our biggest bets of the year go off today. We've got four odd horses on a on a on a fourfold that's going to pay us a lot of cash. It's, it's a lot of cash. It'll be a six-figure winner if we get all four in the bag today. It'll be a big six-figure winner if we get all four in the bag. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. We've got a couple of competitions and so, uh, we've got two horses that have got a real trier against them. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one to ask, but we simply we've done we've done singles, doubles, and 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 a fourfold. So if we get two of the four that we know are going to win the races, then at least we can we can uh, cover our bets plus make a little bit of profit. If two of the four come in, if we get four out of four that at least get placed, we'll make a very good profit. If we get four or four winners, boom, the guys will be able to get pickles with our chippy tonight. They'll be able to get mushy peas with our pickles tonight. You know, it's going to be an all-in, no-expense-spared dinner tonight, I'll tell you guys. Mushy peas and pickles. Maybe even a, instead, of, instead of chips, we'll maybe go with potato fritters. Potato fritters. We may even go down that road, guys. The typical healthy Scottish dinner. It's uh, it's uh, got absolutely no goodness in it whatsoever, and it has one billion calories, and uh, all of that is fat, basically. So, yep, it is exactly what the doctor ordered. There's a thing we have in Britain. I don't know if they have them in America, uh, Kim. It's called scraps. Do you have scraps in America? Yeah. Do you have do you have chippies? Traditional chip shop. You get fish and chips. Because when you're when you're when you deep fat fry the fish and you deep fat fry the chips and you deep fat fry the haggis and the, the you deep fat fry, right? There's always the bits that break off, right? All the bits of batter and all the bits of fish and all the bits of chips that all break off, right? And they kind of get a little bit gunged up with fat and all that kind of stuff at the bottom and they scrape all of the rubbish out. That's the scraps. You can buy those separately as a, as a little appetizer or a little side dish. You can actually buy the scraps at the bottom of these uh, deep fat fryers. Brilliant stuff.
Yum. <laughs> we don't have that. Or at least not in my part here. <laughs> Welcome in, guys. Happy Thursday. I think people sometimes wonder now. why the Scottish life expectancy is in is 52 years of age. You know what I mean? And you think to yourself, well, Kenna, there's the reason why. You know what I mean? There's the reason why, because they just eat loads of sh crap. <laughs> 